this time on Between the Wheels. It's got that power steering belt just tight enough. You know, you get the sleepers with like six or seven hundred horse, and then you got the, the sleepers that sleep two, one in the front, one in the back, kind of. Yeah. I smile every time I see the shitmobile, man. It's it's a character all on its own. So the whole trip, I got pulled over 12 times. We're doing a documentary. It's for uh, Life Network. It's, it's kind of like cops, but from a criminal's point of view. So you inadvertently kind of started living the Ricky lifestyle. Yeah, more or less. Uh, hey, can you guys give me a little bit of fucking privacy here, man? I'm trying to fucking shave. Bought it in 1983 for $100 in a used washer and dryer. He asked me questions like, uh, is it fast? You really don't have to say much. Bye. Just enjoy the ride. If Dominic Toretto is a real person, definitely be you. So when I was 14, actually, I found this on Kijiji. I was literally in the garage anywhere from six to 12 hours. Decided to make a race car out of it. Let's see what happens here. So the whole trip, I got pulled over 12 times. So I'm standing here with Mike Raspberry and the infamous Shipmobile. Yes, sir. All the way from London, Ontario. Yep. Good to meet you, buddy. Hey, How you doing, nice, man? buddy. Now, Good this is really impressive because, first of all, this car is pretty famous. It's yeah, a Canadian General Lee of sorts. For it is sure. Canadian General Lee, yes. I, I would, that's a good name for it. But what's really impressive about this car is that this is not the original car from Trailer Park Boys. This no. is a clone. Yeah. And so you it, built it. So it's, a, it's the third car they've used on like the production set so far. But uh, yeah, I initially made it just as a fan-made replica, and uh, yeah, I guess the car kind of speaks for itself, really. Like, it's... Uh... <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is, exactly. This car, it's a legend in its own in so many yeah. ways. One thing nobody ever talks about is is the engine. What, what, what has it got under the hood here? Oh, so it's a, it's a 440. So it's got a 440. 7.2 liter, buddy. Oh, fuck, horn works. Yeah, so this is, this is her. Nothing too fancy. Four two liters bottles of pop, I guess. So it's literally <laughs> like the Dukes of Hazard, you know, Canadian version, because that 440 it was in the General Lee. General Lee, yes, yeah. So that's a that's actually a sweet engine to, be, to have. In oh, here. I mean, like mind you, it's got maybe 160 horsepower because the things like rode hard and put away wet. It's got like probably 350,000 miles on it right now, but uh, it still runs pretty good, smooth. Yeah, it runs pretty smooth. Yeah, it's not too bad. Got that power steering belt just tight enough. <laughs> uh, I know, there's a lot to talk about this car. I know it's one hell of a story, but but I'm fucking starving. I don't know about you. Man's got to eat. Yeah, gotta man's got to eat, buddy. Meat. Slap those meat fingers on. Yeah. Yo, chicken dogs. Fuck, you should have cleaned off the grill there, bud. <laughs> Fuck, I fucked up. Don't worry, I usually cook them with the plastic on. More flavor. <laughs> <laughs> It actually all starts like even beforehand too. Like I had a, I had another car, not quite the same year make model, but I had a '79 Pontiac Parisian that um, you know I daily drove for like eight years, and uh, you know that was kind of my tester vehicle to figure out how I was doing the paint. And uh, but this one here, I've been driving for the last two years, give or take. Yeah. So where did you find this? Like, what made you just go out and I'm gonna buy? You know, a Yorker. Um, buy yeah, buy uh, buy a New Yorker of sorts. Well, you know what? It was. Uh, this one particularly, like, so I was looking around, I was trying to find like a really good candidate and I, you know, they were either really mint one owner cars or they were just completely too far gone. Technically, this is actually the third car that I had in my possession when I started buying parts and cars, trying to figure out which one I was going to ship mobile. This one here, this one was was in Windsor, Ontario, and a buddy of mine, yeah, Garrett Kemp, he actually sent me the ad for this that was on, it was on Kijiji. So I messaged the guy and uh, went down and uh, 
funny enough, his name was Ray, actually. I can't remember the last name. It's perfect. But, uh, but yeah, his man. last name was Lafleur. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, eh? It kind of make a little bit more sense at that point. But, uh, but yeah, man, no, I uh, picked it up for uh, for 800 bucks. I went <laughs> went down. Uh, Steel. So he, oh, buddy. Well, it was funny. I got him down to 900 bucks, and then he was like, threw me, uh, threw me 100 bucks back. He's like, yeah, you're going to need this for gas on the way nice. back. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, right on, man. But uh, but yeah, no, I picked this up in 2018, uh, around, around this time, yeah. actually, yeah. Yep, so I've had it for a while. It was my daily driver. It was a completely different color inside and out uh, when I got when I first got the car. It's been a labor of love since then. That's um, right, and, and you did a huge restoration on that, and we're gonna talk about that, but before yeah. doing a, a restoration, if that, it's not, that's what you call it, I don't really know. Restoration. Restoration, <laughs> that's more along my lines yeah. of kind of restoration. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what you did is, like, you bought this thing, but what made you say, I'm going to make a shipmobile? Because nobody just goes and builds a shipmobile. Like, what made you say, I'm going to do that? Well, like, when you were buying it, did you have that in mind? or? So, when I bought this one, I had I had it in mind, but it was like, I was still on the fence of whether it was too nice to do it to or just drive it as is. Because it was actually a yeah. you know, nice patinaed car, kind of, at that point. And it kind of goes back to that first car that I had, that 79 Pontiac Parisian. I had... At one point, worst case Ontario on the back window, you know, just <laughs> that's how that was my daily driver, right? And right. had that Ricky esque look to it. But I, uh, I always wanted, I wanted a movie car replica. That was my, that was my first little, little bit to it. You know, like I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to have a movie car. Yeah. You know, I'm a Trailer Park Boys fan through and through. You know, it, it's just kind of my way of giving back to the fans as well, right? Like, cause I, I remember, so when John Dunsworth, like I, I was able to meet him I became friends with him for about a year and a half before he passed away and one of the things that I'll never forget is what he did for me uh, I wanted to make a shipmobile replica you know I met him backstage at one of the events that me and my oh shit we got fucking I think they're oh dude they're, they're fucking cooked oh those are done <laughs> yeah they're fucking uh, I gotta turn the gas yeah, I don't think fuck. we're gonna be able to get back from this one but yeah I think uh kind of fucked up there I don't a little think bit gas goes this thing's fucked yeah, don't, well, at least we got no fucking trailer to burn down. Yeah. Me and my buddy are sitting at uh, Tim Hortons, and then he's like, "Well, fucking uh, Trailer Park Boys is is uh, is coming to um, to Kitchener." And this is like 2015. This is like December of 2015, and uh, I'm like, "Yeah, fuck, that'd be kind of cool to go." And like we talked about like ticket prices, and I'm just like, "Yeah, man, I'm too broke. I can't do it." So my girlfriend at the time, uh, she worked. She was working at Tim Hortons. So we're sitting in Tim Hortons. She's working, and she overheard me and my buddy talking about that, and she bought us tickets to go see them. Nice. And <laughs> I, uh, that was just a surprise all on its own. And uh, so then the day that we were going to go see them, I, uh, I got this idea. I talked to my boss, and I was like, "Hey, it's you know, a pretty slow day. Like, do you mind if I, you know, use the paint booth?" I, I was driving the Parisian at the time. So then I purposely painted the car kind of like shipmobile-esque. And my boss was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this, right? So uh, yeah, so then and then literally I left, uh, you know, went and picked her up. We left, went to the show. We ended up both being audience uh, volunteer members. And then partway through, there was some talk about like, oh, there's this car that kind of looks like the shipmobile that's here and whatnot. So met some of the guys there, um, you know, like uh, Rob, I uh, met Rob briefly. I met, uh, yeah, JP, Mike Smith briefly too. So, uh, Sam, uh, like Sam Lasco, he was there. But yeah, then John came out. John took an immediate like liking to me because he's just like, he wanted to drive my car like almost immediately after seeing it. And uh, so I got, I let him, I let him, let him drive it. And that's how, this is how we met. Yeah, <laughs> actually strike anywhere about it's right off the fucking headliner, bud. Yeah, buddy, right on. Okay, so here, here, this is the problem. There's no problem <laughs> like a drunk behind the wheel. That's the worst fucking problem. <laughs> you sure it's a pity? That's a pity. <laughs> John Dunsworth is driving my car. I should have jumped in. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Light her up. We ended, up, we ended up going to an after party after that. Drive past two cops and I'm like, they have no idea who the fuck is. You're like, even driving past the bars and shit, I'm like, nobody has any fucking idea who the fuck is driving my car right now. And it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> 
So, you know, I had a heart to heart with him. Yeah, like I, I've got a, I've got a daughter myself, and uh, some of the heart to heart was, you know, like about my daughter and, uh, um, yeah, just other life experiences and stuff at the time. And then I, uh, I asked him, um, like, what, like, what would it take to be an extra on season eleven? Like, I, I'd, I'd love to give, like, I'd love to get out and just even, like, not even be an extra. Like, I just wanted to get reference photos yeah. of the shipmobile so I could build my own. And uh, you know his response is like, yeah, man, find it when we're, we're filming. Show up, like, I'll yeah. find you a spot. And uh, I like I took that with a grain of salt. I was like, uh, you know, he probably gets this a lot. So yeah, John Dunsworth calls me up in my break. I'm like, holy fuck, all right? Like this is this is wild. I couldn't fucking believe it. Like he literally called me up. He's like, you know, yeah, we're filming. Uh, you know, show like you know like come on out. Like we're filming. And uh, went out, made the trip, uh, made the made the trip all the way from Stratford, uh, Ontario to uh, to Truro, Nova Scotia. And I kind of cruised up like up the rest of Nova Scotia a little bit with it. But I was there for about two weeks. For filming, got some reference photos. I did that whole that whole trip with the uh, the Parisian. I got, you know, I got photos of my car beside the uh, the actual shipmobile, and and you know, like, I still remember the first time I sat in that car. I was like, man, like I can't believe like I'm in the shipmobile. Like, and I remember how that like that memory sticks with me. I remember how it made me feel and how like ecstatic I was. Not even the fact that like, you know, like me and me and John shared uh, me and John shared a bit of a trailer. Like it was him. Pat, which is Randy, uh, Corey Bowles, like they all shared a, a set trailer there, and uh, you know I showered there in the mornings um, and whatnot, slept in the car basically the whole fucking time while I was out there. But uh, but man, it was you know like just that whole experience, and then you know being able to sit in the car for the first time, like I was like man, like this is like I remember how that felt for me, and I get to see that like with a whole bunch of people that you know see the car or get a chance to you know sometimes I'll drive some people around if I if I can or just even in general like just being able to take a photo of, with somebody beside the car like just seeing them laid up it, it kind of makes my day actually <laughs> In terms of this car, it didn't look like this when you got it. And I saw the pictures and it's a one hell of a transformation. Tell us about the restoration or whatever the hell you'd the, want the to call it. The restoration. The restoration. Well. Making this thing look shitty. Because that's the hard thing to do. Oh yeah, the patina and stuff like that. Like yeah, yeah. so I uh, I stripped it down like I would have done like a, any restoration. Like I've worked on some restorations. Like I do auto body work. I'm a licensed auto body, uh, auto body technician. And uh, so I treated this thing like basically pretty much like it was a just a restoration. So I took the doors off, hood, trunk lid, and um, you know I sprayed all the jams. I wanted to make it look like it was never the wrong color, yeah. so that from the untrained eye you can be like, like, this, is this actually like the car? Like it doesn't yeah. look like. But uh, but yeah, no. I took all the interior out. Like I, did, I put a floor pan uh, patch in. Had all the interior out. I uh, I dyed most of the interior except for the seats. The seats came out of a uh, another car that I uh, that I had that I had bought for parts. I think the only bit of the interior that is original to the car is like aside from like the dash face mm -hmm. and like the gauges and stuff, just the steering column. And nice. the rest of the stuff is, uh, you know, either out of parts cars that I died or, you know what I mean, just whatever else I could find. Yeah. Being in the trade, I figured out how to manipulate products to kind of do what I need them to do. I've tested out a lot of different things just to see like what lasts and what doesn't and how yeah. things kind of progressively wear. That was my that was my intentions too with the first shitmobile, worst case Ontario yeah. I'll call it. Drive it for eight years, see how the paint was gonna wear, see how things were just kinda gonna, gonna kinda hold up. Yeah and what's impressive about this restoration is it looks shitty. Oh yeah. And it's much more difficult to make something look bad than make it look good. Yep. And at the same time when you look at the pictures of you doing the restoration, yeah. it's you're still doing things properly, like you know what you're doing. Yeah. And so it takes a lot of skill to do this. Like how did you know what the right move is to, like to make it look the way it is because it's really hard yeah. to replicate rust and, and, and patina all that. That's well, tough to do. Gotta, it's one of the hardest things. Well, you got to think of it as you, you got to really think about it, about it as like in layers, right? You got to think of it in a layered form. Like what would the original car have been? What would the primer have been? Like what, you know what I mean? Like you're starting from like 
ground, like basically ground zero metal right up, right? So like I took all those into consideration, you know, like so, so some of the primer spots, like so, so like some of the underlying uh, stuff, like below the, even the green here, like I've got, you know, a couple different, you know, shades of primer, like I got gray mostly, you know, like what they would have used in factory, you know, some red, red oxide primer and stuff like that, yeah. but not too much, just here and there in spots. Like you won't be able to tell until it actually wears eventually over time. But, um, but initially I got it all green. Didn't do too much of the damage until yeah. it was all green. And then when it was all green, it did a lot more of the damage. And I was kind of just looking at photos and video of, you know, the, the progression of the shipmobile through the series. Like I, right. I watched um, r the really early stuff that uh, Mike Clattenburg had, uh, had directed, like Pilot and One Last Shot. And uh, anything I could find with pictures of um, their New Yorker even before it was even in the series. So yeah. then, you know, I'm taking in the notes, okay, what damage was done before it was even painted black. Yeah. And then I kind of replicated that onto this, just as best as I could, just with the photos that I had. Yeah. And uh, from my knowledge of when I seen the car up in uh, Truro, just, be, uh, just while they were doing season 11 filming. Once I had most of the damage done, and uh, I bared some metal spots just to kind of like rust it out. I flash rusted it, you know, okay. using a, a concoction of like yeah, sea salt. Um, I used pink Himalayan sea salt. Whoa, so, uh, okay, so <laughs> you fancy. salt? Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. So you just stripped it down in the metal. Yeah, and like you so. Just, it put salt on so, it. Yeah, so some of this stuff. Well, so actually it was it was uh, in a spray bottle form. So yeah. I used the uh, yeah, pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, hydrogen peroxide, <laughs> and vinegar. Yeah. And I you know, sprayed it on and like it flash rust, right? right. So then, I, you know, you don't leave it on too long or like eat through the panel. Yeah. So left it on for like half hour or so and then went to the car wash and just like, you know, spot free rinsed it yeah. just to kind of neutralize it. But that, but it's the rust as you see it has basically been like that since mm -hmm. like I, I built the car back in. Did you, uh, did you clear coat over nope. the rust since then? You just leave it? I, just I was like, I, I was like thinking the whole time, what would Ricky do? How would Ricky have his car? Ricky wouldn't clear coat his car. No. Okay. He'd just, he'd just throw on another, uh, another coat of black paint or something like that, right? So, but after I had some of that damage done, you know, I drove the car around for two weeks to let the, uh, like the, you know, the, let the green paint kind of just, um, you know, do its thing and kind of cure. And, um, and then from there, that way the black, when I did the black trim clad, it didn't like bite back into the paint and stuff. So yeah. it will, it'll, it'll wear naturally kind of like, I don't know if you see some, how the black's been kind of like, you know, wiping off or scraping off and it's still showing some yeah. green. Like, you know, I wanted things to kind of just yeah. wear naturally. Warm, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, I did that, uh, let that cure, did the, did the black, um, after the fact. So, you know, kind of, it went over a little bit of the rust here and there. Now this car looks amazing. It's very impressive. You would never know. When I first saw it, I saw your journey. I thought it was the real car. I jumped no like, shit, what eh? is this? Like, I, yeah, yeah. I, and then obviously <laughs> you quick learns replica. Yeah, how those oh. dogs are? Oh yeah, those fucking dogs are. Yeah. Holy fuck! I think we burned them, bud. Ah, fuck, oh, that's buddy. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. buddy, that's all right. We might have better luck with the Newfoundland stakes. Well, so when I first saw it, at first I was convinced, oh, this is the car. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, it found out quickly it's a clone, but. What's so impressive about this car is even though this isn't the original car from the movie, it was used recently. Yeah, in, in one of their next, uh, in their yeah, one of their next production. movies. Okay, so I just started showcasing the car. I put a submission into uh, Motorama in Toronto, and uh, the car was really well received there. Like I had it all set up. Door was off. It allowed people to go in, take photos, and stuff like that. I had a lot of public response from that. Like people yeah. were in and out of the car the whole time. I was there for three days. Like I was littering on my car. Like people were losing their friggin' minds. You know what I mean? Like it was, <laughs> it was pretty cool. And uh, I got, uh, you know, I had people trying to buy the car off me at that point. And that was wow. back in Jan. Uh, I think it was maybe it might have been March. I can't. So very remember. recent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't. Um, yeah. It, it was. Wasn't that. Uh, wasn't that long ago. And then uh, I brought it to Niagara Falls uh, Comic Con, and uh, that's where the boys were uh, doing one of their, um, um, you know, their events as well too. Oh, so they were actually there physically in person. Yes, yeah, there. yeah. So it was kind of like a, a teamed ordeal. So like I, you know, I brought the car there, you know, set it up. I had some like hockey net, you know, freaking the the cooler, the barbecue. I had a whole bunch of stuff up there, and they were doing their event there as well. So like I brought the car there, so, you know, set it up. This guy comes up to me. He's got this like Trailer Park Boys like coat. It's like 
TPB, big letters, got all their faces on it and everything like that. I'm like, you know, like he's coming up to me and, and he's like, hey man, like, you know, I've been following you for a while and, and really cool what you did with the car and like, you know, it'd be really cool if we could use it in, in our next movie. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? Like some sort of super fan, like Trailer Park Boys fanboy or something like that. Yeah. Turns out, yeah, he's, he was part of the, uh, the transportation uh, side of things and uh, he also does a bun uh, bunch of other stuff too with uh, the Trailer Park Boys franchise and whatnot. You know, J uh, JP's nephew actually, so Julian's nephew. Really cool guy. Mike Smith who plays Bubbles, he uh, he basically confirmed that. He'd come up to me and he's like, yeah man, we're gonna be yeah. filming here sh uh, soon and uh, it'd be really uh, really cool to use the uh, use the car in the next movie. So uh, yeah, I kind of just went with that and uh, <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. Nice. They're they're pretty much fucking done they're anyway. Fucked. I don't think we're gonna be eat those. Away. So the whole how the whole event went down. I was planning on driving the car to the event, mm -hmm. but the car wasn't even really road worthy at that point. Like you know, I kind of neglected the car a little bit, and it needed some some work. I just I couldn't I didn't have the money or the parts at the time, so the car yeah needed towed to the event. I get this opportunity to bring my car from London, Ontario to pretty much Bedford, Nova Scotia. Yeah, that's and a I, hell of a drive. And the kicker is, it's like, oh yeah, we're by the way, we're filming in like a week and a half. Oh, wow. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And they didn't have a, a shitmobile. Essentially, the shitmobile yeah, so, had fallen apart. Yeah, so theirs was inoperable. So they, they had it scripted, but it just was inoperable. So how the hell did you safety this? <laughs> that's, well, that's the main thing. So that's the, the nice thing is, you know, with Ontario rules and stuff, like you get your car safety once it's in your name, mm -hmm. you know, so I had it safe. It was already safe. It was safety. registered and everything. Like yeah, that. like I was, I was daily driving it for two years before I even okay. made it look like this. When I got that opportunity, so they were, at first they were like, yeah, get a quote, figure out what it's gonna be to, you know, like to get it shipped out here or or what it'd take to fix it up and drive it out. Like, well, yeah. you know, we'll figure it out. And then as the week progressed, it was like, yeah, we talked to production. We're kind of like, you know, in and around or over budget. So they, they were basically like, yeah, like if you, make, if you can make it, we'll use it. But if not, like, you know, it's no big deal or whatever. So then me being the fan that I am, like yep. for what Trailer Park Boys means to me. And Rock and Julian's look hard there, bud. Fucking right, buddy. Well, seeing Ricky being in anything else but the shitmobile is just like, it, like man, no, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, and I think there should be just the unwritten rule of like the shitmobile never really dies. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just kind of took it upon myself to be like, you know what, if I can make this happen, like not even for myself, not even for this car period. Like I could have cared less in that aspect. It was just more like, you know what? Like I'd just like to see the shitmobile in the next movie. And probably, you know, a lot of other fans could probably see the, th the same thing. Even though it's just minute part of it, it's still like, ah, that's, you know, that's pretty wicked, right? Um, Cause I, I smile every time I see the shitmobile, man. It's, it's a character all on its own. And, and that's another big part of it. When I first saw this and then I saw the, the story progress, yeah. what was amazing about it was the response from everybody. It's almost like you you reignited everybody's passion for Trailer Park Boys, and everybody was seeing this thing. It was being shared. People were doing quotes, you know, in all the conversations. And yep. the one really cool thing about Trailer Park Boys fans, it's, I've never seen this anywhere else, is that people are never negative. No. Like someone will no. throw a positive quote, someone will throw another, it's like, you yep. can have two guys that have nothing in common, yep. And then one of them finds out, oh, the other guy likes Trailer Park Boys. They can go to the bar and talk about Trailer Park Boys for like for three, four hours. hours. Yes, hours. And so that's the cool thing about yeah. Trailer Park Boys. You don't see that in any other shows. And, and even if you, like from an outsider point of view too, even if you think it's like negative, it, it's not really used in a negative context. No. You know what I mean? Like it's, we're all kind of there for every, uh, each and every one of us. You know what I mean? Like it's a really good fan base. And I don't know if a lot of people like outsiders yeah. realize that or not, but like we're, yeah, man, we're like a pretty tight-knit family. Like, you mess with one of us, you mess with the whole park. There's so much more to it, and that's how the fans are, and I think that's how everyone kind of gets together. And what's cool about that, so you drove there. You did the drive. Yep. And you ended up staying for way longer than oh, just the movie. buddy, yeah. So, like, even even in general, like, the drive, um, even the drive up, like, I was, you know, I was making stops. I was uh, letting people take photos of the car and stuff like that and all that stuff. You up well? There you go. There you but go. yeah, like when I 
when I got out there and filming was done and everything, I uh, I was getting ready to leave. So I think I was out there for a couple, two or three weeks filming, maybe maybe two and a half weeks. You know, the guys were awesome. They stuck me up in a hotel uh, while I was down, which is really, really cool. I was gonna leave, like it was early, you know, first week in July, like I was gonna leave. Um, but then I was like, you know what, maybe I'll stay another, Another week, maybe, maybe two. I'll see if I can kind of stretch it. Then the province kind of, like part of the province kind of flooded. So then I get a phone call and you know, some people are like, hey, you know, like we're coming up from London, Ontario to go work in Nova Scotia. Do you want to do a job while you're up there for a bit, make some money? One of the malls in uh, Bedford actually flooded and I was doing uh, like some of the tear outs and flood remediation or whatever they call it. Yeah. But meanwhile, I'm doing that and then I'm cruising around the province, I'm doing all this like, you know, stopping here, stopping there, you know, and just, I'm driving around this car yeah. with a missing door all yeah. over Nova Scotia. Like, so you inadvertently kind of started living the Ricky lifestyle. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> We're doing a documentary, it's for uh, Life Network, it's it's kind of like cops, but from a criminal's point of view. Yeah. You were you were driving this thing. You actually slept in this uh, thing. Yeah, like six or seven times. Six yeah. or seven times. <laughs> when you were coming down here, you yeah. were coming down, it was like two in the morning, and, and you were going to arrive, I think, three or four in the and you're like, oh, I'm just going to sleep in my car. Yeah, I was like, there's no sense getting me a freaking hotel, man. You, you were like, just yeah, going to sleep. I'm like, I'm like, no, man, but that, that's hilarious that you were willing to yeah, do that. Yeah. So you literally like, embodied Ricky without planning it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That you, like, how was that, like, kind of living like Ricky would? but yeah. in real life. Oh man, it, it was uh, it was interesting, you know what I mean? Like, um, I guess some, some people got sleepers and I've got a sleeper, like you yeah. can sleep in it, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, as far as the car world sense goes, yeah. right? You know, like, you know, you get the sleepers with like six or 700 horse, and then you got the, the sleepers that sleep two, one in the front, one in the back, kinda. Yeah. What was the craziest thing that happened in this? Like, of all the things you experienced? Oh, buddy. What's Ricky and Bubbles up to now? Never mind, boys. It's George Green. Our chances just went up to 98%. I've had so, <laughs> so many crazy experiences. Like, I've had, dude, I don't even know where to begin, like, with all the crazy experiences. Oh, fuck. People are just losing their, losing their minds. Fans are like, this is awesome. Like, be cruising downtown Halifax, no door. Just uh, another, another little Sunday cruise. <laughs> You and know? you weren't driving around like a shoker where you, people can't touch it. There was people jumping Dude, in and out. I'd I remember be, seeing people, videos yeah. of people jumping in and out of the car. Like, like you were, I'd cruise down, open. oh man, I'd cruise down the street and people would just hop in. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'd, people would be like, hey man, like if I give you cash, can you drive me home or whatever? So I'd be DD in there, yeah. you know, I'd be, uh, you know, just kind of doing whatever, man. Like there was a lot of people reached out to me. Like I've just, I've had so many, like just so many experiences. I right. honestly, I don't know where to, what the pinpoint or where the pinnacle is of like experiences. Like I'm still experiencing more experiences every day. You're still on your way back. He hasn't even gotten I haven't home even yet. Like gone back, how no. many months have you been away from I arrived at Bedford, Nova Scotia on set yeah. on the 22nd of June. It is now the 28th of September. Yeah. And I like, I literally just arrived on Ontario soil. Like just like, yeah, like two o'clock in the morning or whatever yeah. the hell it was, two or three o'clock in the morning. Wow. That's yeah. the cool thing about these kind of trips. You can't really plan it, and it's been a life-changing experience for you. Yeah. What does this mean for you? Like after doing this whole trip, like what? It, how has this changed your life? Like even too, like I I built it more just for myself at first, and then you know I'm, I'm glad it got the recognition it did, and I'm and I'm more than thrilled. Like I got like I got a certificate of authenticity that you know it was used in the movie, and and like a lot of the fans like kept, really kept me going like. Uh, <laughs> Undocumented, I mean, I probably got thousands of undocumented hours. And my buddy, uh, Jamie Bart, awesome, awesome guy, awesome mentor. Man, like, that, that, what, that's what really kept the drive going. Because there was times where, like, because I knew I only had a month in the shop. So, like, you know, figure 14, 16 hour days, every day, weekends, weekdays. I was just constantly in there doing whatever, right? Like, uh, you know, if it wasn't for him, like this even wouldn't, wouldn't even be possible. 400 hours in one month. Well, that's pretty cool. With all that said, you know, it's got history. It's got all the work you put into it. It's got no door. It's got everything the shipmobile has to have. And with a 440 in there, I'm really curious how this thing drives. We got to go for a drive. 100%, buddy. To yep. get the full Ricky experience. <laughs> oh, buddy, it, it's, I'll be honest with you, man. It's, it's a, it's a treat. It, you'll, you'll, it's an experience, man. Right, yeah, for sure. Let's do it. I can't wait. <laughs> this sounds good, man.
money. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. You probably get a lot of those, eh? Oh, buddy. You have no idea. I wonder if uh, anyone will recognize the car. This is beautiful, man. But awesome. she's, she's not bad. Handles all right. Yeah, man. This is awesome. It's like a massive couch on wheels. Yeah, I love buddy. it. Oh, it's great. Wow. Actually pretty luxurious. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Buddy. Like, well, you can, you can tell why Ricky slept in his car the whole friggin' uh, the whole time, eh? It's literally the most comfortable seat I've ever been in. Yep. Awesome. Oh, it was funny too when I was leaving. Uh, like I think back of the show a little bit. When I was leaving Nova Scotia, everybody's like, "When are you coming back?" And I'm like, "Ah, probably two weeks." Yeah. You know, and I just kept on saying two weeks, two weeks, two weeks until I finally actually left. But uh, I always think of that one season where, uh, where that, well, the very beginning where uh, Ricky goes up to Julie and he's like, "Hey, man, you know, like Lucy kicked me in the trailer, whatever. You ought to, you know, to sleep in the car for a couple of days or whatever." And, he says two weeks tops, and the yeah. next thing you know, he's like just lives in the fucking car the you, whole series. You literally have been living Ricky's life. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm literally, uh, as, as some people call me, real life Ricky, I guess. And it's funny because it's not by design. You just yeah, kind of happen, and just everything happens. fell into place. Like kind of, you know, kind of feels almost at home a little bit, right? So I grew up in Clinton, Ontario, and. Uh, you know, I remember like even hanging around like the trailer park around there and like, yeah, I was a bottle kid at one point, man. I used to throw around bottles and, you know, break shit and, you know, do weird shit like that. Like not, not saying I'm proud of it by any means or whatever, but uh, you know, I used to- It's the way she goes. Don't, don't do that. I don't encourage that, but no. that's, that's kind of what happened back in the day. This is freaking but, excellent, dude. I'm sorry. I had, I don't even want to cut you off. It's just oh, yeah, man. sweet. Loving this. The Ricky life is not bad, man. No, she's not bad. Very, very. I can't uh, believe you drove this thing for like several months with no door on until. Oh, three. Well, like uh, so, three months in Nova Scotia, no door. Wow. Yeah. And it rained all that. Just, just fucking. I, I put a tarp on. Yeah. Like no big deal, right? Wow. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like open concept, right? <laughs> <laughs> open concept, mobile open concept. I love it. Yeah. This is a whole new meaning of open road. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh man. Like these feel somewhat, do you still feel like kind of safe though? I do, no, I don't feel like I, it's, I'm not hanging out of it, but you know. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm on the brakes. I always want to know what that feels like. I gotta love that power steering too. Oh yeah, buddy. Like I, I was, I was pretty, uh, pretty careful about all the things that I did with this car. It's, it's a gray area, but, uh, yeah, it's completely legal to drive with a passenger door off. As long as you got these two mirrors, you just yeah. buckled in, the rest of the car is all right. And uh, speaking of getting stopped by the cops, how many times did you get pulled over? Because I swear, oh, at one point you were getting pulled over almost buddy. every day. So, uh, <laughs> it was, <laughs> so it was, so the first four times I got pulled over was within 14 hours. Oh, uh, no tickets or anything, right? So, uh, but yeah, no, no tickets. I haven't had any tickets or anything like that. Did you use the whole, uh, you know? Yeah, I know Jim. Jim knows you. you. <laughs> like, fuck, man, I think we used to play road hockey together, actually. Uh, you wouldn't have, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to have a couple of smokes, would you? You know? Yeah. But uh, got one here on the visor, actually. Yeah, yeah. no doubt, eh? Yeah. So the whole trip, I got pulled over twelve times, no tickets issued. That was all. Actually, sorry, I got it's pulled almost over. like an accomplishment, it's like Guinness World Record. Man. Uh, yeah, most times getting pulled over with no ticket. Now it's pretty That's crazy. Impressive. So, so actually, sorry. And all in all, I got pulled over fourteen times. Twelve times uh, was like the for, within the first like week and a half. I guess uh, then they knew at that point. They're like, we know this guy. Yeah, don't they don't pull over they, the guy with the New Yorker. They sent out uh, they sent out an email not to uh, not to pull me over, That's uh, you know, unless it was for uh, moving vehicle violation yeah. or uh, or anything else, just because they're like, yeah, like yeah. these guys, you know, pulled over a lot. You know, no tickets been issued. And know. then my last question for you is: we talked about the restoration, all this yeah. work, all this time. How much did it cost you? Oh uh, yeah, so uh, just this just this car and all the parts, paint, the materials, bought in my name. Everything up until probably this point, I've got about six grand into it. Wow, six grand to keep the, the legacy going. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty cheap. Uh, the whole Nova Scotia trip up until now, I've probably put about right now just shy of six thousand miles. It's well worth it, man. I know oh, it was a hell of a trip, buddy. It, it, honestly, yeah, probably one of the most life-changing experiences I've ever had, and uh, or anyone could have for that matter. Oh yeah, no man, and it's man, I, I'm forever. I'm gonna be forever grateful that. Uh, that I, you know, I, I set out uh, to do this and I've accomplished what I've accomplished. Yeah. And uh, yeah, really thankful for everybody that's uh, been there, uh, both to uh, support me and uh, be here for the ride. Nice, man. Well deserved.
I'm Mike. Well, thanks, man, for sharing your ride yeah. with us, telling your story. Hey, thanks, buddy. Everybody that appears on the show always gets ah, a little hat. Sweet. That's for you, man. Some swag. Well deserved. And cool, buddy. We're gonna go one step further. You know, usually we just give the hat, but yeah. we've also started this thing where we give awards. Oh, okay, okay. And the thing oh. is, your journey yeah. is, you know, it was very selfless. The fact that you you built this car so that it could be in the show and then people can enjoy it. Yep. At the same time, you took the time to, to meet all these people, like you took the time to talk to us. Oh yeah, you, yeah, man. You talk to everybody. It's, it's just a very, it's a selfless thing to do. You know what I mean? You, you kind of made people's dreams come true with Trailer Park Boys, and that's a really cool thing to do. So. What we have is this award for you. Oh yeah? And it's basically an award of excellence. Oh, thanks buddy. And basically I call it a community fucker award because that's kind of what you are. Community fucker award, that's awesome <laughs> man. And uh, don't get too excited, that's not real gold. Oh, that's okay. But I wasn't it, gonna it's it good as it. gold because, yeah. you know, you can bring this to like a job interview and you can tell them you got your PFD hey, or whatever the fuck it is. I got my PFD or whatever it is. Oh, <laughs> thanks buddy. Hey, no, I appreciate it. That's, uh, that's slick man. I do appreciate uh, you know, even yeah, reaching out to me, and uh, you know, I again too, my thanks goes out to uh, anybody that's uh, supported me over the years, and everybody that's like helped me out with the uh, the trip and uh, and all that stuff too. Like, if it wasn't for the help of the fans and, um, and you know, and uh, a lot of my friends, like I wouldn't be where I'm at. What makes this really cool for us is I actually had a bucket list last year. We made a bucket list in our behind the scenes. Yeah, and we had two cars on there from Trail Park Boys. One of which was the Shipmobile. Now, although Sweet. yours is not the the, uh, the original yeah it's almost better because what you've done is it's so impressive what you've done and it's such a big accomplishment that it's actually more impressive than the original shit and go so we're crossing that one off oh, the box geez. because of, of what you've done so awesome, this is really man. cool so your car was on the bucket list and the second car on the bucket list was actually jp's or julian's camaro oh the camaro i think actually i i don't know whether or not for sure because mm -hmm. i'm more of a shitmobile connoisseur of sorts but, yeah but i think I want to say that his Camaro was used in like like the the one was it season seven when yeah. when Thomas or was it yeah like Thomas Collins like, yeah I think it'd be really cool to hear you know the story what makes it special because a car is just a car without yeah. a story oh, so hearing his his background what makes the car special and at the same time it's gone through a lot of transformation so he's actually pulled the engine yeah he's, and doing, he's, a motor, he's doing a motor swap on it he's right dropping an LT4 in there that's a crazy fast that's like over yeah. 700 horsepower that's crazy so yeah. that'd be really cool to see what that runs like really curious we usually do a lot of carbureted cars we got some LS's, yeah. never seen LT, so that'd be kind of cool to see, so. He's pretty cool. I did get a chance to talk to him a little bit about that on set, and uh, yeah, man, he's super cool, super down to earth. Um, yeah. I got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, should that come up, let us know if you want to see that. We definitely would do it for sure, because I think it'd be cool. cool. And the second thing about Trailer Park Boys, what makes it really cool is the fact that you, you went down there and changed your life and you had a positive effect. I can relate because the fact is 13 years ago, I also got in a less than roadworthy vehicle and drove all the way down Nova Scotia with my brother. Sick, cool man. And we drove down to, to do the filming locations, believe it or not. Oh yeah, go, yeah, go around, see where they filmed, the, all the different trailer parks and stuff like that, yeah. This is Julian's trailer, original Sunnyvale. Nice. We're out back here uh, behind the King of Donair. It's where Julian's drunk on Swish. And Randy's hooking for cheeseburgers out front. So we went down there and we filmed all the trailer parks. We filmed the location. We had all these places we had. We had done a lot of research on it. And at the time, I had signed up for, for television broadcasting. Oh, and cool. the reason I signed up for television broadcasting was because of the show. I saw the behind the scenes and yeah, how yeah. they were using hockey sticks as, with the microphones. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it, was, it was amazing that they took such yeah. a small idea and made it possible with, with, with the limited stuff they had. So it had an effect on my life. And then when I went down there, I actually had a life-changing experience as well. It's an honor to welcome you this morning to the presentation of the very first Golden Box Office Award. Basically, they had this award they were receiving for Countdown to Liquor Day. It was a 2009 yeah. Goldie. Appreciate it very, very much. But first, I'd like to talk about Al Roach's gut. <laughs> and we arrived, and it wasn't for fans, but they let us in because we had a camera, so we were media. Oh, that's cool. By the end, they actually ended up having us, we were getting pictures of them with the awards and everything, and a conversation with Mike Lattenberg there yeah. changed my life forever. I'm Max and Dave, um, trail park fans who have driven here from Ottawa, right? Thank you very much, because I consider this award from you too, and, and, and Canadian uh, trail park fans. And I was only 22 years old at the time, so I really didn't know what I was doing. This show has inspired me to basically go into television. I've always loved television, but 
I've never thought about actually going into it, so it really inspired me to follow my dreams. And after that conversation, I knew I made the right move. So if it wasn't for Trailer Park Boys, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where it was. That's so. cool, man. Because you know what's really funny, actually? So my life-changing experience, when I met John uh, Dunsworth, but when I actually went out there to Nova Scotia, it was like 22 or 23. So that's kind of cool, too, actually. Yeah, and it's these life-changing experiences that will kind of dictate the, how your, the rest of your life goes. So now you're obviously, you're, you're kind of seeing where your life's going to be. Now you're a couple years behind me in terms of, yeah, you know, I had going, this experience, you know. Going for Freedom 35, I guess. I had, I had this experience you know 13 years ago and since then it really changed my life yeah they're not gonna film here again but for old time's sake let's just throw her down the hill and I know this is putting you on the right path yeah so it's really cool to see this but you know what they say you know tortoise always eats the hair right nobody fucks with the tortoise and you're the tortoise so <laughs> so uh, you're on the right path for sure and uh, the last thing I want to say is yeah. I want to ask is how can people follow you What's the future of Mike Raspberry? Where where do you see yourself, and, and how could people follow you, and, and how could they aid your your quest? My Instagram is raz two zeds underscore shitmobile, and um, you know, and then I also got TikTok. It's Mike Raspberry. I would like to build some more movie replica uh, replica cars. Probably stick with the Trailer Park Boys theme. Like I might do a Leahy fuckmobile with the roof cut off. Uh, but I'm not opposed to making any other replicas, like if I got commissioned to make something right. else. Like, and you're a very talented guy, like you're, like all joking aside, your work some, workmanship is actually amazing. What you did was yeah. really solid oh, I stuff. That. Thanks. And there's a, definitely a talent there, so I, I I hope to see you, you know, in the future, oh, yeah. making movie cars. Or and uh, you know, I've, I've been kind of doing whatever roles that pop up that I get to. Yeah. So whether it's working on cars, working on film cars, working in film. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of winging it right now, really. F future of Mike Raspberry is, is unknown right now, but the uh, to me. <laughs> all the doors and windows are open. So we hope to see good luck in your future, man. Hey buddy, where yeah. she goes, man. Where Thanks, she goes. Buddy. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I suggest you stick around and check out the preview for what's to come later this season on Between the Wheels. Got a lot of outrageous rides and some really cool ones lined up. And aside from doing these episodes, we also have the 72 Nova behind us. This is a barn find that's been parked for 46 years, hasn't been on the road since 1977. Recovered it with my family, and we're rebuilding the whole thing here on camera, and we're gonna bring this thing back to life. In the meantime, if you wanna follow us, I suggest hitting the subscribe button, but make sure your notifications are on. A lot of people don't hit that bell for notifications, and you don't see the videos coming out. I don't know why this is a YouTube problem, but it is, but I guess that's just the way she goes, bud. Check out some of the crazy shit we got lined up coming up. Next time on Between the Wheels. And when I first met you, I was immediately intimidated because your name's Attila, you're Hungarian descent, and you look like a more intimidating version of Julian from Trailer Park Boys. A Camaro is a very sexy car. But what's really intimidating is this car. This thing is an absolute beast. <laughs> watch uh, Street Outlaws, I did like these guys, ran on the street, I went there, made noise and went home. Is it fast? Yeah. Is it bear shit in woods? What's up, Bobby? You're a legend! to say much in this case you just sit back and drive and relax just enjoy the ride it's a tribute truck to the tv show the fall guy this truck here was found at a junkyard on the side of the highway who had a for sale signed up against it paid a thousand dollars for the truck took something that was just a thousand bucks sitting neglected there's always a chance it can go in the crusher and no one wants to save it. But you brought it back to life and you made it something something that really stands out. It's not just any truck. Now as cool as all these cars are, we're here today to see just how fast these cars are. 